What's up guys, Sean here, and today we're going to talk about the United States Senate. First off, I want to thank everybody for watching my last video. It's nice to see a video about data collection do so well on my channel, rather than the videos that I normally do where I talk about people who are lying or misrepresenting data or just our overall progressive propaganda arms. Of course, that video got demonetized and confirmed as not advertiser friendly by a manual reviewer at YouTube. So thank you, YouTube, for saying that talking about how crime data is gathered is not advertiser friendly because that's a sensible policy. So in that vein of flooding you with information that I think is interesting and hopefully you'll think is interesting, we're gonna talk about whether or not our government is broken. Every time the Democrats lose an election, there's all these think pieces and videos about how our democracy is just broken. When they lose House elections, it's because of the evil Republicans and their evil system of gerrymandering. Fun fact, gerrymandering, what the Democrats are complaining about now, all the cases that support the Republicans' ability to do gerrymandering were won by the Democratic Party decades ago. But let's ignore that because now the Republicans are gerrymandering and now it's not fair. Now it's a problem. When it was helping the Democrats, they literally sued to make it law. But Republicans are evil, so now it's a problem. When they lost the presidential election to Donald Trump, it was time to rethink the Electoral College. The Electoral College was broken. Of course, that was their initial position that we had to get rid of the Electoral College, but then when they thought maybe they can convince the electors to switch the election back over to Hillary and line it up with the popular vote, then they were in favor of the Electoral College. Republican members of the Electoral College, this message is for you. As you know, our founding fathers built the Electoral College to safeguard the American people from the dangers of a demagogue and to ensure that the presidency only goes to someone who is to an eminent degree endowed with the requisite qualifications. An eminent degree. Someone who is highly qualified for the job. The Electoral College was created specifically to prevent an unfit candidate from becoming president. There are 538 members of the Electoral College. You and just 36 other conscientious Republican electors can make a difference by voting your conscience on December 19th and thereby shaping the future of our nation. But then when the electors didn't do that, then it had to go again. Because, you know, consistency is what it's all about. And now the ire of the left has turned to the United States Senate because it turns out, and I don't know if any of you heard about this before, the Senate doesn't have proportional representation. In fact, these 62 senators represent a quarter of America's population, but so do these six senators. Also, on top of that, there are two senators from each state, no matter how large or small the state is. Therefore, small states have the same representation in the Senate as the large states. And that's not fair because the large states are larger and we should have a house of government that is proportional, right? Now, the main problem I have with this argument, other than the fact that it's completely disingenuous and that if the Senate map were flipped and it benefited the Democrats instead of the Republicans, we wouldn't hear anything about it. But there is a fundamental problem with the Senate and it does have to do with the people that the Senate represents. Because the United States Senate is actually designed to represent the exact same amount of people in every single state. And that number is zero, zero people. That's how many people the Senate should be representing. You see, despite the fact that we have people across the country warning that our democracy is broken or our democracy is in danger or our democracy this or our democracy that, the United States was never designed to be a democracy, and the United States is not a democracy. The United States is a republic. Now, the founders did believe in some democratic values, like taxation without representation. That's why all revenue bills must originate in the House of Representatives, the People's House. Unlike the Senate, the House has proportional representation, which means by population, and the House of Representatives has two-year terms because the framers of the Constitution believe that the democratically elected wing of our federal government needed to be held accountable more rapidly than other branches of government. By contrast, the Senate is supposed to represent the states. That's why each state has the same amount of senators, too. But the framers of the Constitution went further than that. Senators were not actually directly elected by the people until 1913, 
when the 17th Amendment was passed. Prior to the 17th Amendment, state legislatures actually elected senators. And the reason for that is because senators are not representative of the people, they're representative of the state. They were designed to be delegates from state legislatures to the federal government. And doing away with the state selection of senators was one of the biggest mistakes the United States has ever made. One of the reasons given for getting rid of the 17th Amendment was that it was going to reduce corruption. There was a feeling amongst the people of the United States states that rich people were essentially buying Senate seats from state legislatures and they wanted that to stop and they thought that the best way to do that would be to have the people directly elect senators. However, clearly this didn't work because now senators go to Washington for six years and they do nothing except meet with special interests. All the 17th Amendment did in terms of corruption was consolidate corruption. If you wanted to corrupt the United States Senator before, what you had to do was get in good with the majority of the state house and the majority of the state senate. All the 17th Amendment did in terms of corruption was cut the middlemen out and now to corrupt the senator, all you have to do is go after the senator. And considering the average senatorial campaign costs $11 million to run, we just streamline corruption for the special interests. Worse yet, we streamline corruption for national special interests because at least before, you had to have some presence in the state to be a significant special interest. Now you can be anywhere. Wall Street guys buy up senators in small states all the time. And the second reason the 17th Amendment was a horrible mistake is because it removed several checks and balances on the federal government. See, we're all taught that the executive branch checks the legislative branch with the veto power, and the legislative branch checks the executive branch with the spending power, and the Supreme Court interprets the Constitution to check the other two branches when they step out too far. And the founders designed three equal branches of government that all check each other, and that's how our system works. Now, I know that sounds wonderful, but that's completely wrong. The founders actually designed the Constitution with more checks and balances on the federal government but the 17th Amendment removed them and then provided cover for other branches of government to grow and abuse their power. Think about it. Did you ever wonder why the Senate advises and consents on Supreme Court nominees and not the House of Representatives? Now, the reason the president nominates federal judges and they have to then be approved by the Senate is because the federal judiciary was designed in part to settle disputes between the states and the federal government. The founders knew what we have forgotten now, and that is in order to have a neutral arbiter between the federal government and the states, the federal government and the states have to have a hand in picking those judges. Making the senators electable by the people makes them agents of the federal government and not agents of their respective state governments. And this is why the judiciary has aided and abetted the federal government in their expansion of powers. And this is not a partisan issue. I can cite cases that will inflame anger across the political spectrum where the Supreme Court has aided and abetted the federal government in usurping power that belongs to the states. The Founding Fathers weren't perfect by any stretch, but they knew what they were doing when they were designing a government. The idea that directly electing senators is inherently good rests on the idea that the will of the people equals morality. I don't buy that and neither do the founders. That's why they set up a system of government that worked whether or not the people behaved well or not. You see, you can't be corrupt without power. So the founders designed a system that even in bad times, in corrupt times, the corruption of the states would check the corruption of the federal government because neither corrupt force would want to give up their hold on power. And hopefully, in that struggle for corruption, we would land on the delegated powers of the United States Constitution. Right now, all the power and corruption is centralized in DC. Senators, instead of being agents of their states, are agents of their political parties and those who support their political parties. This is why I'm 100% on board with repealing the 17th Amendment. It was a mistake. The Senate became more corrupt, not less corrupt. The judiciary has gone from being a neutral arbiter between the states and federal government to the most powerful branch of government, and it's completely partisan and political. And this concentration of federal power has actually made local government more corrupt. Because since this power has been taken away from our state legislatures, people don't even know who their state assembly person is. They don't know who their state senator is. Voter turnout for local elections, aka the election that you have the most impact on as an individual voter, is the lowest. My state house representative and my state senator were running unopposed in this last election. And I guarantee you, if you look at your representative's race, the same is probably true for them. You have so much more power in these local elections than you know, and if you absolutely hate all the candidates for local office, you have the power to run and win without raising a ton of money. Ironically, the direct election of senators has actually weakened the individual person's voice in government. 
on the state and federal level. If you can't tell, I'm in favor of repealing the 17th Amendment, and I hope I convinced you with this video to support that position as well. If you like this video, then show me by leaving a like. You can also comment below, share it, subscribe if you want to see more. If you really enjoyed it, you can support me monthly on Patreon or give a one-time donation via PayPal. This has been me talking about repealing the 17th Amendment. Till next time.